Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day and today let's take a look at how to play Freya. That's right, no jokes and no montages here. This is a gameplay discussing how to overall best use Freya, build her and play her so you as a newer player or even a veteran player can learn some more Freya tips and improve your Freya gameplay. My name is Rain Day of course and welcome to the channel. Thank you guys so much for viewing and of course if you want to stay tuned to more content like this, guide guides, how to blaze and of course my top five that are coming out very shortly for you guys who want to know a new one is in the works I will say uh, please stay subscribed to the channel I do appreciate it and it's the best way to support me in this content also leave a like and a share if you liked enjoyed this and, and learned something today so, so we haven't even started the video so I know that might be a lot to ask but just want to throw that out there in the beginning thank you guys today we're looking at Freya and I'm gonna go through all of her abilities I'm gonna show you a gameplay that I had earlier and yes the sound is off but you know what I really think that the, the most important thing is seeing what's taking place and as I watch walk you through it you can gain and garner whatever type of information you like some people don't know the smaller things and so they want to know the little details about how the passive works and this and that some people want to know the big overall hey how do I play this what's the main combo we'll go over all of that stuff in just a moment as we pick up the blue buff here and it looks like we're heading to the lane but oh my god Freya is in some trouble here and dang Raijin with the kill and zero goes and takes it off I get my banish up into the air and hit a couple of pulses onto both of them that has splash damage area damage and you'll see the boxer are trying to probably eat a minion gain some health back and he does and now he's put in a, a decent spot there pretty much full health but I'm full health as well due to my start with vampiric shroud and boots now I've been starting with vampiric shroud on Freya for a couple of reasons one Freya's passive called Brisson. Let me try this out. Brisson Gaman's Blessing uh, grants her additional magical lifesteal. So Freya starts out with lifesteal, which means, see all those, those green numbers when I'm hitting? I'm gaining five health for every time I do that. But not only that, when you have that in tandem with Vampiric Shroud, which gives you plus 10 health and mana for every enemy you kill, when you delete a wave, you're not only lifestealing off that wave, you're, you're occasionally getting those extra 10 health and mana off of killing them, and, and that can be a big sustain factor. And honestly, with Freya, with this build, as I pretty much show you how to miss every single pulse auto attack I could possibly ever miss on that freaking Raijin. But you know what? That happens. You know, you just sometimes can't hit your attacks, and that's okay. They have an early game. They got the first blood. The biggest point that we're doing here is being patient. A lot of people will try and dive back, get that first blood, and you know what? Uh, you see uh, Epic Gamer Ben on his Bastet. He's just trying to go ahead and get some of the stuns onto Raijin, but it looks like the Bakasura is pursuing. He's got the jump on and oh is he gonna go down it looks like oh no boxer is in trouble now he's gonna have to run away i've got my number one irradiate and i'm trying to take him out i've got my pulse activated now the combination of that and irradiate doing some damage but not taking him out and i don't want to risk it because you know why if cupid comes over if uh if raijin comes back after he's got full health uh, you know we could be in trouble here we're very isolated it's a long way back to the tower i don't want to fight it I i'm telling him to retreat i'm saying get out of there man get out of there because you know it's not worth it like i was saying when you Part of, part of these videos are also giving you general smite tips. Part of it is that when first blood happens, you tend to see the snowball right away because people will then try and get something uh, in return. It's that kind of eye for an eye scenario that we live by in America very often and, and, and all over the world. It's like, oh, you got me? I'm going to get you back, right? Who can I kill on your team? And sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes your friend makes a bad play. Sometimes you make a bad play, and that's just life. You have to let it back, and, and the smart way to do it is if you trust your play, if you trust your overall gameplay, which as watchers of my channel, you will improve in, but also as players, I believe in you guys, and you should believe in yourselves, that really your play will help you get back into the game. You made a mistake early, but if you eliminate the, the mistakes that you make, you'll give yourself a better opportunity to win. So that's something that I just wanted to point out. We are down 0-2, but that doesn't mean we still can't win this game. Now, I've got full boots, and I've still got my Vampiric Shroud, which in tandem with Briss and Gaumann's Blessing gives me some very nice sustain. And so you might want to try this out when you're playing Freya. I usually go into Boots and then Demonic Grip, but this time I'm trying uh, Fatalis. Now, the reason I'm going with Fatalis and the reason Freya is a girl that uses Fatalis, there aren't a lot of magical carries that use Fatalis very well. I would even say Kronos is not a great Fatalis pick because he scales so well with magical power, and his basic attacks, his number two, grants him a Fatalis. So it's kind of doing the same thing over and over again. It's relatively redundant. With Freya, the value of it is her number two called Pulse. Actually, scales off of attack speed so you will essentially get more pulses off the faster you attack it is basically active for five seconds so if you can hit 10 times in five seconds you will get 10 pulses off with 
10 times the damage, right? 10, 10 times the damage of one. If you can only hit five in five seconds, you will get five. So Fatalis early is very good for two reasons. One, it creates the, the obviously the more damage. It's actually an increase in damage for her because you're pulsing more. Now the Bakasura going ahead gets the kill. I jump into my ultimate and I do secure the kill on him as well. The Cupid is here and I've got my pulse available. I miss my banish. The Raijin is looking to ult me and he hits me with one and now I'm getting pulled towards the Cupid. However, Raijin jumps onto me. He's got Raiju. He pops it and now I'm down to 291 health. Detective Game is here trying to help me, but I don't know if he's going to stay alive. I've got my twos and now Cupid is trying to go ahead. He misses his heart bomb and I'm able to sustain and stay alive protect, protecting this tower. I get the lift onto the Raijin. He's going to have to jump back real soon. This guy's playing a very dangerous game. He must not feel threatened by me and why not? We're down one to three. They're doing pretty well. They're up 2,000 gold almost. Well, 1.2k gold, but now Bastet jumps on, and he should get the kill, and Epic Gamer Ben does onto Leon Valor. And now, like I was saying, the reason Pulse is very valuable for two reasons. Fatalis. Early, it will give you more damage. Not very often when you have to select Fatalis onto a mage, the early selection of that item will not give you more damage. It will give you more attack speed and, in a sense, more damage because you'll do more attacks, but it won't actually increase the amount of damage your ability is able to do. This does for Freya. That's why it is a pickup on her that you will almost always see. Now, Demonic Grip is another item that I will pick up in this build, and you'll notice that gives me magical power as well as attack speed, and that's something I would recommend on a god like Kronos. Now, the Bakasura is AFK or looks like he's trying to type to his teammates, but that just may be his death and I do get the kill there and I am now what am I two and oh this is looking good for me the Raijin jumps in there but he's not going to be able to beat me down those drums ain't doing you any favors right now you can play your bongo somewhere else buddy but actually the cupid ult comes out and now uh -oh, Athena's in trouble and now the Bastet jumps onto the Raijin but I go into my ult and guess what that's a sitting duck or maybe that's a sitting drummist that's it's a it's a guitarist but is it a drummist I don't know is it really is it really is it defined is it defined yet please somebody tell me drummer yeah it's a drummer yeah yeah, Miranda, you're you're forgetting the word drummer, and you're 25 years old with a bachelor's from UCLA. Okay, all right, cool. Good to know. Thanks, thanks, guys. All right, just need to remind myself there. Sometimes when you're, uh, eh, you know, when you're doing multiple things, it can be hard. The, the Bakasura uses his beads there, and that's great. He's afraid of my slow. We're, we're on to the two, but I want to talk about the number one first. You won't see me use it a lot. Really, Frey is a lot about her, too. But I want to talk about the number one so you know what that is. It's got two components. The number one is called Radiate. What it does is it gives Freya a basic attack a buff. So a, a lot of people will run up to minions or run up to players if you're out of your pulse and be able to use your number one. And that gives you basically like an increased damage to your basic attack. That's pretty much what it is. But of course, it's not her easiest thing because as a mage, uh, it's it's much easier to play your game from afar. With Freya, she's in that mid-range and close range. And her ultimate gives her the only kind of long-range longevity that she has. But now, looks like Bakasura is ulted and he could be in trouble. I've got my pulse there, and so I'm hitting him, but he looks like he's healed up somehow. And now, I'm trying to go after him. I've activated my irradiate, and I'm going with him with the buff, but I cannot hit him. Oh my god, he's still gone and he jumps. I do get hit with the jump and he picks up Cupid's heart, but now as he goes for the second one, I know where he's going and I hit that up. The Raiju misses. Can I get out of this alive? I pick up the Raiju. Oh god, but no. The Oh my god, the thunderclap and the fields of love. That is not going to work, man. That is not going to work. I am done and I'm heading back to base, but I did pick up my demonic rip and that is again giving me the 60 magical power and the 20% attack speed. And it's also going to be penetration, very much like Executioner on the physical side. It's going to reduce my target's penetration by a percentage, uh, which will be calculated before the flat, uh, flat penetration. So if you have Spear of the Magus, which is like, okay, flat pen, uh, it takes off 10 as Epic Gamer Ben gets the kill there, takes off like 30 pen. Okay, they will reduce their, their protection will be reduced by 30. But if you have flat, if you have percentage penetration, Say they have 30 protections, right? So first what will happen is you reduce it by 30%, 40%, whatever. Let's do 30%. And now you've reduced 10 of those protections. That's the Bakasura. Could be in trouble. I do hit my last ult and I kill him. Now the Raijin's here. I've got almost enough for a Radiate and I now hit it with my number two and I'm going for the full damage burst onto him and he's going to have nowhere to go. My Radiate's still active and I get the double kill. I'm 6-1 and 0. Although we were down by two kills, I am dominating this game. And I'm actually going to lock my door just in case somebody tries to bust in here. I know people I know people want glory. They want to be on Rain Day Gaming. Well, guess what, buddy? You got to earn it. You got to earn it. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just, I'm just playing. But anyways, the, the, the truth is, with a Radiate, it's it's a buff for your for your physical attack damage. And like I said, Freya has the mid-range kind of game, very locked in. Uh, very hard to get around from her. Um, and again, that's a part of her too. But the Radiate 
that's what it's going to do. It's going to give you that damage, but it, it also is going to combination with her number two, which is called Pulse. Now, Pulse is a buff that Freya activates to make her basic attacks ranged, and so instead of actually basic attacking like normal, if you, Pulse will not happen. If you just hit your auto attack with Freya, you will just hit right in front of you. She will be a melee physical mage, but magical mage, a melee magical mage. But when you have Pulse activated, those attacks become long distance and you gain it. So it's basically 60 damage per 15% and plus 15% of your magical power. That will be different to find depending on the scaling that you have and how much magical power you have. As I take out, look at that with the Pulse, although we do lose the blue buff, I take out the Bakasura much quicker. And you have to ask, why did you take him out so much faster? Well, the reason is I activated Irradiate onto that Bakasura. And the radi Irradiate and Pulse can be comboed. Now, what that will do is something different than what Pulse does. Now, Pulse, what it does is gives not only the damage from a basic attack perspective, so you range your basic attacks, but it also slows your targets. As you can see, it's a great way to make sure that somebody stays where you want to be. As I anticipate the Raijin going to blink over here, and now he's got nowhere to go but die. That's essentially me just anticipating the Raijin going to be dashing, and otherwise, I'll stay in that mid range and basic attack and wait till my pulse is up and just kill him. So he was really at SOL basically and I had nothing to do there. And so I get pick up this damage buff and now we're 11 and 11. Although I am nine of our team's 11 kills, uh, I don't mind it that way. The boxer was here and he jumps and that's a bad decision by him because now he's got no escape. And I know that. So I go full hit steam on him. I use my beads so I don't get caught into the cupid ult. And now I want to take him out. I do banish him into the air. The Athena could go for the taunt, but DG. Uh, Comic Sans, Detective Games, he has been lagging a little bit, so it looks like he lags out of being able to taunt perfectly, but I want to take their blue buff. Now, like I said, Pulse slows, and that's great. It's a 25% slow for two seconds, but what will also happen is if you activate a Radiate, you will lose the slow. The slow is also in an area of effect, so as you can notice, I hit minions. I hit people around it with my two. It's just kind of like an area splash damage, but when I activate my number one, I lose the splash damage, but I gain extra damage. I gain the damage from Irradiate, but it also is a single target and it loses its slow. So for instance, you lose the splash damage, you lose the slow, but you gain the damage of irradiate as if you were hitting them with an irradiate basic attack as well as your pulse damage. So you pretty much get damage from both abilities, but you lose the slow, you use the, the utility of the slow, and you lose the utility and clear of the splash damage. So it's something that you want to do in a certain way. What I like to do with Freya's combo is use her two, slow them maybe once because you have a 25% slow for two seconds. You're going to be basically only fighting them for two, four seconds max. And so basically what you'll do is use your two second slow. And then all of a sudden you will go ahead and hit them once with that. You'll apply a two second slow and then you'll activate your irradiate. So your irradiate will come not immediately. It'll be something you activate as your base gets attacking. And that will allow you to go ahead and cause the extra damage while they're still slow using the utility of the slow that's still left over from your number two and then causing as much damage as possible. Now, the benefit of that as well is with Fatalis, when you're slowing them uh, with your number two, you're going to lose your movement speed penalty. As you see, I activate all of it right there. Why? I use, I use the whole kit and caboodle, right? I did everything onto that Cupid because I had a chance to kill him. I knew he was taunted. I didn't need the utility of the slow, so I needed the specificity and the damage, uh, or the single target damage onto the Cupid, so I activated both with uh, with CC from Athena, and that's something you could do as well. If you have CC from another teammate, you can activate your 2-in-1 and, and just guarantee the, the most damage possible onto a single target. As you see, the Polynomicon is proccing like crazy, and I get a second kill. I've also tower dove him, and I pick up the Bakasura, and now he's dead. He cannot pursue. I've I've got my two and I want to fly up into the air. I hit him once, twice, three times, and that's a kill for and zero going back to base. And I'm 14 and one, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is exactly how you want to be playing Freya. She is almost unstoppable. And why I love her because she's just so good when you get rolling and people cannot stop it. The slow, the utility from your slow, it's almost impossible to get away from her with your ult. Now, I'm tower diving, and the reason I go full onto this Cupid is to force a retreat. He cannot stay. If he stays, he will die, right? I know I'm taking tower damage, but I know I can get out of it. The reason the tower damage would be a problem is I was taking tower damage and getting hit by Cupid. But I know that turning on a Cupid will force him to retreat and allow us not only to kill the tower but get him half health force him to retreat and then i'll be able to do that back in safety forcing him to go probably back to his base 
staying and just focusing on tower would allow Cupid to hit me while I'm just hitting the tower, not doing any damage on him, and then he might be able to ult me. I'll be taking tower shots if he starts to fight me because then the tower won't be even close to being dead if I start to fight him at the end like, oh, I'm almost dead. Now I got to fight him, but then the tower will be hitting me and he will be full health. He'll have had the advantage and now I'll be in a pretty bad situation and my ult was not active so so many reasons there but that's why i did that polynomicon uh let's talk about the ultimate so you guys know what that is and then we'll talk about the build so i see the bastet jumping in the i banished the bakasura and now i use my number one as well i missed my polynomicon proc but it doesn't matter i hit him three times and he's dead that's a three shot that's a three shot and to be honest if i would have hit my polynomicon probably would have been a two shot it's 15 one and zero we've got a couple awards under the fire giant damage buff to make sure where they are and i've got a ward here that i'm looking to see if they counter warded and no oh, doesn't look like they did so I'll put that there. But the idea with her ultimate is called Valkyrie's Discretion. She jumps up into the air, and this can be used to get out of Odin's ring. Uh, I'm not sure if you can... You can't go over player... Like, you can't go over walls, like walls from the can't damage buff to the, uh, you know, to the lane or something like that. But you can uh, get out of, like, uh, I think player-made walls, like uh, Thor's wall. You can go over that. You can go over, um, you know, Odin's ring, right? Like I'm saying. And Raijin is just... Bye. Bye, Raijin. See you later, man. The Cupid Fields of Love does come out, but I've got beads, and I use it right now. Cupid's in trouble. I go up into Valkyrie's discretion. Why do I do that? Great dash by the Cupid to avoid, because you know what? The Cupid had me slowed, um, and I was not able to catch up to him. I don't know if he's building Frostbound. I just wasn't able to catch up to him, unfortunately, and that's that's just uh, not what we want, but we have Fire Giant, and one thing I didn't notice, guys, I, I gotta tell you, it's crazy. I didn't know this, but look at that. Two shot. Two shot the Bakasura, guys. Two shot with the Polynomicon unreal damage like i said valkyrie's discretion it can get you out of situation so it's a really good thing it makes you cc immune and now cupid is so dead there i get out of here this game is almost over wow freya going in 18 and 1 it makes you cc immune but it also makes you um it gives it hits four times and so you have to hit all of them to guarantee your damage but oh my god the Raijin gets blown up with the athena damage and we're just going to finish this game right here now it could do a maximum of 960 damage plus 140 percent of your magical power which mine right now is 419 so 140 percent of 419 that's at least 400 let's do the math probably around 400 and what 180 400 600 close to 600 damage on top of that so you're doing like 1500 damage potentially to people if you're hitting all four of those uh that's ridiculously strong and and, of course, because of the utility of it, because you can get out and because you can get out of tight situations like Odin's Ring, which is very strong god right now, I love it. It's a very valuable ultimate, something that I think is really, really good. And you could use it to chase people down, but you could also, like I was saying, use it to escape and get yourself in a better position and also let your cooldowns come back up because you're, while you're ulting, you can take time in there. There's a circular reticle that will show you how long it's taking, and that will also give you time for your pulse to come up to slow and, of course, the movement speed and all that stuff from the Fatalis. Now, you're seeing the items here. Bancroft's Talon, an item I got because of Freya's passive, allowing not only her to do more damage when she's low, uh, so we're not boxing somebody, but also allowing her to gain additional lifesteal, 12% more. So now I'm at about 32% lifesteal because I have 10%. I've got 12% from Polynomicon and B Bancroft's Talon total. So that's 22%. And I've got my 15%. So that's 37% lifesteal that I'm gaining. So almost 40% of all the damage I'm doing, I'm gaining back in terms of lifesteal. That's extremely hard to box. You see the damage from the Demonic Grip as well, the penetration reduction there, the Fatalis to keep me close. Uh, it's just a really strong build. And this is what I would recommend if you're using Freya. Obviously, you're going to sell out that Vampiric Shroud when you're done uh, for another item, but gotta say, 23,000 player damage, 19 and 1. Obviously, guys, this is a great way to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I do want to let you guys know that a new top five is coming out very soon. I'm working really hard for you guys. Try to get these clips together. And of course, if you don't see a lot of like frequent, frequent uploads, I know I had a lot of uploads last week. This week, it's because I'm working on a top five. So hopefully, I have that out for you guys in the near future. And hopefully, you guys watch and tune in. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, guys, remember to never give up, never stop gaming. And I'll see you guys next time.